Dry Jazz. Dramatic stories from the pages of America's most popular magazine. Brought to you by the Studebaker Packard Corporation and its dealers. Hello, I'm Donald Wood. You know, I used to read stories of escape with great skepticism, but not anymore. Not since I read this story about General Henry de Giraud. In World War II, he was the sole survivor of a machine gun emplacement when captured by the Germans. From the moment he fell into the hands of the enemy, the general began making plans for his escape. And we're now going to see Giraud's adventures, beginning with his plans to reach the courtyard of his prison 160 feet below, with the aid of implements smuggled to him by his wife. After many hair-raising incidents, he reached his homeland, and when North Africa was invaded by the Allies, he was sent there to lead the free French forces in their battle to win back their democratic way of life. On May 10, 1940, German infantry poured out of the works near Le Catalet, France. Rapidly, the attackers overran the French position, surrounding and isolating the area. Advance and be recognized. I have an aunt. Make sure. Who are you? General Henri Giro. Rejoin your squad. I will take charge of the general. March. General Giraud was taken to Königstein, a top security prison, perched on a sheer cliff 150 feet high, with every entrance double guarded day and night. such a thing have happened. When the Germans broke through the yard in the forest, I made a personal tour so we could out hit the front. We were surrounded. Art and forest? What about the Maginot Line? Maginot Line? <laughs> it's no more. Outflanked. Then what the Germans have been saying is true. <coughs> in this persistent cough. Do you get medical attention? Of a sort. But tell me, General, what has happened to Paris? Paris has fallen, France occupied, thanks to traitors. It is all over. It'll never be over, as long as there are Frenchmen left to fight. It's over for us, at least. We're right here in Königstein prison for the duration. No, no, Colonel. I'm not going to remain in any German prison. I'm escaping from here as soon as I can. Three months elapsed, during which time Giraud never stopped plotting his escape from Königstein. General, it's a 150-foot drop from the balcony. No matter how skillfully you weave that rope, it'll never support you. But if it were reinforced... With what? Copper wire, for instance. <laughs> Copper wire. You might as well wish for a pair of wings. Wire's more practical. I'm rather large for wings. <laughs> if I could only make my wife understand. And the sensors go over your letters with a microscope. A uh, code to let her know what I need.
You're out of breath, General. What have you been doing? Taking a walk? <laughs> I take a walk every night. And what about you, Colonel? Do you take a walk, too? <coughs> no, I... I'm afraid the General has to travel alone. You are the only one who is going to do any traveling. Pack your belongings and be ready to leave here at daylight. What are you talking about? Where is the Colonel being sent? Back to France. Isn't that what you asked for? Yes, but that was months ago. Orders just came in from the Surgeon General's office. We fight a war, we take prisoners, and then we send them home again. And what's worse now, I have to get up before daybreak to get you on your way. Congratulations, Colonel. This time tomorrow you'll be in Paris. Yes, but you'll still be here, General. Never mind about me. The moment you arrive, you must get in touch with my wife. How much time do we have? Uh, five or six hours before daybreak. Long enough for us to work out a code. It must be something very simple that I can memorize quickly and teach to Madame Giraud. <coughs> this is the first time I've been glad to have tuberculosis. Where do we start? Suppose we uh, choose one subject as the basis of our code. For example, um, food. Uh, cake. Cake will stand for identification papers. After Colonel Dornay was repatriated, the quantity of letters between General Giraud and his wife increased. Scarcely a week went by without a package arriving, all of which the Germans inspected before permitting them to reach their prison. General! General! You call me, Wilhelm? <laughs> for a moment, I thought you'd come for one of your walks. Now, why would I try anything as foolish as that? Other prisoners have attempted this. I personally swept some of them up. I wouldn't think of putting you to so much trouble. You got another package. Food again. Times must be pretty good in France for your wife to keep you so well supplied. Ah, a hand. Exactly what I wanted. Just look at that, Wilhelm. Isn't that a thing of beauty? French ham. The pleasure is all yours, General. Enjoy yourself. of April 17, 1942, General Giraud was ready to begin phase one of a complex plan to escape from Königstein prison. First to go was the General's most recognizable feature, his mustache. The general dropped so fast that his gloves were shredded. 
His hands were agonizingly burned by the wire corded rope. Reaching the wooded area just beyond Königstein Prison, Giraud paused only long enough to put on his coat and hat. Then, looking like any other elderly German civilian, he headed due east on the route he had so long ago committed to memory. Exactly as the general had computed, Shandau was five and one-eighth kilometers from Königstein. leaving the Chandot Terminal at 110. Where is it headed? Out of Germany, we hope. Your name is Ludwig Bernhardt. Present occupation, munitions. Formerly Colonel Werner, with a fine military record in World War I. You shouldn't find any trouble filling out the details. in here. I must have fallen asleep. I couldn't open the door. Well, that's strange. Works perfectly. Ah, everything happens in wartime. Nothing seems to work right. This is no station. Why are we stopping? The Gestapo is coming on board. A prisoner escaped from Königstein. safer in the middle. I'll go first. I'll change the train to the next stop. Keep traveling until the uproar dies down. The uproar won't die down. They'll keep looking. back and forth across Germany, hoping to avoid arrest by keeping continuously on the move. Now, hi, hi. Next. Is this seat taken? No. Thank you. Allow me to introduce myself. Colonel Ludwig Werner. Uh, long since retired, I'm sorry to say, Lieutenant. Gruning. Heinrich Gruning. Gruning. Not General Gruning's son, by any chance? Uh, no, sir. Oh, well, perhaps it's just as well. Sometimes it's difficult having a general in the family. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. I only hope the war lasts long enough for me to be promoted, sir. Nevertheless, you intend remaining in the army? Absolutely. Good. After the war, Germany will need her officers more than ever. Upon us will rest a great responsibility. Thank you. Here is Rommel, blocked only by the British General Ritchie's tanks, which we Blitzkrieg out of commission. Now we sweep through Egypt. Full control of North Africa. 
Your papers, please. Uh, and the Mediterranean. Do you realize the potential, Lieutenant? Frank will be forced to bring Spain into the war on our side. Then we eventually make connections with the Japanese. A military dream about to come true. Your papers, please. Uh, yes, of course, my papers. Uh... Idiot! Colonel Burnham's papers are in order! But... Now go about your business and stop bothering us! Yes, sir, Lieutenant. I beg your pardon, Colonel. You won't be troubled again. Nothing worse than a civilian in uniform. <laughs> Do you carry anything unlawful? Check his suitcase. Thanks. Identification. Do you carry anything unlawful? No. Pass. Say, uh, how tall are you? Perhaps six feet. I'm not sure. Stand up straight. Let me see your identification again. Ludwig Werner, munition salesman. Formerly Colonel Ludwig Werner. Whom are you selling munitions to in this part of the country? I've been on a vacation. Take care of the others. You take a vacation while the rest of the country fights a war? I've been confined for several months. The doctor suggested a short rest in the country. Why French? My own idea. I have orders to fulfill in Vichy. Do you speak French? Of course. Why are you wearing gloves? The habit of a lifetime. Take them off. Take them off and let me see your hands. Wanted in his attempt to cross the border into occupied France, and with his escape blocked at every turn, Giraud headed back into Germany, not daring to remain in any one place longer than it took to change trains. You're wondering why I'm staring at you. You look just like that French general they're hunting for. Yes, I know. Same height. Same weight. I've been stopped and questioned at least half a dozen times during the past week. Can't blame the Gestapo for being too careful. This Giraud is a very important man. I wish they'd find him and get over with. You've no idea what this man's escape has done to my skin. I've lost days of valuable time. You're lucky that's all you've lost. You should have shot him in the first place. Wouldn't that be against the rules of the Geneva Convention? Rules? Coddling prisoners? We're fighting a war. If I had my way, he'd be shot on sight. Have you got a light? Allow me. I asked him. Move, General. There's an exception committee waiting for you at the next stop. Let go of him. Go to the last car, General. When the train rounds a curve, jump and head for the woods. We'll make contact with you. Giraud, aware that he had become a marked man, realized that he could no longer travel by train and he continued his journey through the mountainous terrain on foot. Stand up! What are you doing in this territory? I... I got lost. 
trying to find my way home. Is your home in Germany? Yes. Then you have crossed the border illegally. Where am I? Switzerland. My name is Henri Giraud. With Swiss cooperation, Giraud made a final and successful dash into occupied France, resorting to an old trick of changing cars to confuse the Nazis. And at long last, safely crossed the border. For the next few days, Giraud remained hidden and continued his undercover activities to unify the disjointed French nation. will lead you out behind the inn. Open the door! Open it and it down! I want you to clear. Head for the north section of the woods. And wait for me. Where's your home? You are lying! Take him out of here. Following the innkeeper's instructions, the general plunged into the forest and headed north, aware that at any moment he might come face to face with a Nazi patrol. General. <sighs> Morel. I'd almost given you up. There are hundreds of men searching the whole area. Even the Germans can only beat a man so long. Perhaps it's wrong of me to keep on running away. When you're being hunted, what else can you do? Germans are willing to exchange 70,000 French prisoners for me. Those Germans. Leave it to them to think of a miserable idea like that. 70,000 men. And what would they do when they got here? Wives, children, waiting for them. My own son is a prisoner. Well, surely, you want him back. My son is a soldier. You're a soldier. And I'm a soldier. We do what we must. Now, get out of here, General. Before it's too late. I hope I'm worthy. Follow this path for a quarter of a mile. When you come to a clearing, bear to the left for another 600 yards to the water's edge. A man will be waiting there with a boat. Once again, Giraud vanished into silence. A silence that only the French underground could penetrate. When and if the time should come. On October 24, 1942, history summoned Henri Giraud from obscurity. Lieutenant General Mark W. Clark had landed secretly in North Africa. Part of his mission was to confer with pro-allied French officers, to choose a leader around whom the many French factions could rally in the forthcoming invasion of North Africa. The decision was unanimous. General Henri Giraud. British intelligence, working with the French underground, brought the general to the southern coast of France. The general was picked up by a submarine and immediately headed for North Africa. Giraud arrived in time to command the French army, which fought so magnificently alongside the Americans. Free Frenchmen, whose courage and valor will never let their country die. Our next true story of a courageous way of life, this is Donald Woods saying, bye for now. <laughs>